Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Mixcraft Quick Tips, the series where we take a look at common questions and helpful tips in Mixcraft to improve your workflow and your productions. For more quick tips, be sure to subscribe to the channel down below, and if you have a suggestion for a future episode, let us know down in the comments. In this video, we're here to answer one of the big questions you might have, especially as a beginner to music production. How do I use EQ? EQs can definitely look a little bit intimidating, and it's certainly something that's easy to overdo, but by the end of this video, you'll know how to use EQ effectively in your mixes. Before we get into it, let's take a moment to talk about what EQ is and the role it plays in music production. If you've ever used the bass and treble knobs in your car or on your home audio system, this is essentially what EQ is. It allows us to control the tonal balance of frequencies in a sound or on a mix as a whole. Another way to think of this is like a volume slider. If we take our volume slider in our mixer and bring it all the way down, we're taking all of the frequencies and bringing them down. EQ is a little bit different because it's frequency independent volume controls, meaning we can take a certain area of frequencies and add to them or take them away. There are a few different types of EQs, but in this video today, to keep things simple, we'll be utilizing the TB parametric EQ, which is included in Mixcraft because it represents the most common type of equalizer, which is a parametric equalizer. Parametric EQs are great because they represent all of the common controls you'll run into when you look at different types of EQs. These include the frequency, gain, and Q, or resonance. The frequency control allows you to set the center frequency that you want to target. Then you have gain, which allows you to apply a boost or a cut to that frequency area. And finally, the Q or resonance control controls how steep that slope is. Some bands may also offer different filter types. There are different filters like shelving filters, which adjust all frequencies beyond a given point, or cut filters, which remove all frequencies beyond a given point. There are some other filter types, but we won't be addressing them in this video just for the sake of time and to keep things simple. Now that we've covered EQ and what it is and how it works, the big question remains, how do we use this effectively? It's really easy to overdo it when it comes to EQ. It's easy to add too many boosts and cuts or extreme filter settings that can just make things sound unnatural and thin or brittle or too muddy and low and not clear. With that in mind, more often than not, it's a good idea to apply as few adjustments as you can and you often don't need as many adjustments as you think when you start using EQ. When it comes to utilizing EQ in your mixes, after you've leveled out your mix using the volume faders, there's a basic three-step process you can follow to get some pretty decent results. First, we'll go in with our low pass and high pass filters, then we'll go through the sounds and find any resonances that need adjusted for some general cleanup work, and then finally we'll go through once more and address any competition between different elements of the track. For today's example, I've set up a session using some loops from the Mixcraft stock library, and we're going to take a listen through this track without any EQ applied, and then with the EQ applied, and then I'll walk you through how the EQ was applied and why it was applied the way that it was. <laughs> First up is low passing and high passing, and this is one of the best techniques you can start to use for your mixes to get a cleaner mix overall, because a lot of your tracks more often than not are filled up with a lot of actually unnecessary sonic information that can just eat up space in the mix and make things sound a bit muddy. These frequencies generally aren't even all that audible, and sometimes they just don't serve a purpose at all, so it's easy to go in and get rid of them using a low cut and a high cut filter. If we take a look at these guitars here, you'll see we have some unnecessary low end information. And we really don't need that because in this case that's going to be filled in in this track with the bass drum and the bass guitar. To fix this we'll go in and select the first band and change the filter type to a low cut. Now we'll start increasing this frequency here to change the cutoff point and we'll go until the guitars start to sound too thin and then we'll just back off a bit. Now that we've got these guitars adjusted, let's go to the opposite end and check out the bass guitar in this mix. If we have a listen to the bass guitar here, 
There's some extra high-end information we really don't need because the bass in this song is mostly just filling out that low end, so we'll do the opposite here by going up to band 6 and changing the filter type to a high cut. Now we'll roll this down until things start to sound too muddy and dark and then we'll open it up again. And it's as simple as that. This process might take some time depending on how many tracks you have in your session, but it is time well spent because then we're clearing out all these frequencies that can be used by other things. Next up, we're gonna go through our sounds and hunt down any resonances or buildups of frequencies that stand out in the mix in an unpleasant way and don't really contribute to the overall sound. In the case of this clavinet line here, there's some harsh mid-range that stands out a little bit too much in the mix that also ends up overtaking some of the other elements. Let's take a listen here. This frequency isn't really necessary to the overall tone of the clavinet, and it almost sounds like it's close to distorting, so we'll go through and remove this resonance. A really handy tip for removing resonances in the TB parametric equalizer is to go up to the mode here and change this to the left and right sum, which will display this behind the EQ graph. What this represents is the overall frequency content of the sound, which makes hunting for resonances really easy. If we take another listen here, and we look at the analyzer, we'll see a buildup right around here. So, to hunt down any resonances, we'll take a band in our EQ, and we'll make the Q or resonance pretty small here, something at about 2.5, and we're going to sweep through and find that frequency that's really resonant. And there it is. Now we'll just cut this down and widen it out a bit. Whenever you're using EQ to make adjustments in your mix, especially for things like fixing resonances, remember that you generally don't need more than a couple of dB in either direction, positive or negative, because beyond that, things can start to sound a little bit artificial and unnatural. Finally, to wrap up this process, once you've gone through and applied your low cuts and high cuts and reduced any resonances in the sound, we'll need to go through and address any competition. This can be a little bit hard to hear and understand at first, but as you continue to work on your production skills, it should be easier over time, and you'll develop a bit of an intuitive sense as to when things are competing. A great trick to find any competition in your mixes is to mute every track in your mix and then unmute them in order of importance. This way you're building up your mix one element at a time. And as you do this, you'll start to hear when one element maybe starts to add a bit of a blur or a muddy feeling to another. In this case with this track, if we solo out our guitars and then we bring in our clavinet, It starts to not be as clear as it could be because these two elements have very similar sounds and are very similar in their frequency spectrum content. To address this, it's actually pretty simple. We'll go into our clavinet here with the EQ and we'll find a point that we really want to bring out or something that really makes this sound stand out. In this case, it seems to be that right around 2000 Hertz, we get a bit more of that mid-range clarity. Now, we'll go into the guitars and take out that frequency. This way, we're removing that competition in this frequency area. So, we'll go in and open up our guitars here. We'll go right around 2000 Hz once again and apply a cut or the opposite direction that we applied to the clavinet. And now, if we take a listen to these two elements again soloed out together, they should sound a bit more clear and should have a bit more of a defined sound overall. Once we've done that, we'll go through and follow that same line of thinking for any other elements in the mix, like maybe the bass and the kick drum, or maybe the snare drum and the vocal, or anything else that might have just a bit of competition by taking something and enhancing it, and then taking it away from the less important element. One last tip when it comes to EQ for your mixes is that, generally speaking, you want to cut more than you boost. And this is because if you start placing emphasis on everything, then nothing really ever gets that emphasis. In some cases, you may want to apply a boost, like adding some high-end sheen to a vocal or some low-end weight to a baseline, but if you do this for every single element, boosting all the things that make that element sound good, you end up with this giant frequency soup that's just unclear and messy. So it's always a good idea to pick and choose your battles and only emphasize the things that really need it, and for everything else you should just go through and remove anything that's either unnecessary or just maybe sounds a bit harsh in the overall sound. This way you're placing emphasis only where it's needed and not emphasizing every single thing. As a quick example of this, let's say we have a kick drum and a bass guitar. Now we might think we want Want to apply low end to both of these things because they're both low end elements that would benefit from some added weight. However, if we go in and apply a giant low shelf boost to both of these things, it ends up creating this big bassy mess that's just hard to hear. 
Instead of doing that, you might go in and cut out some 100 hertz from the kick drum and add some 50 hertz for that nice low subby energy. And then in the bass guitar, we'll cut out everything below 100 hertz and apply a slight boost right around 100 hertz in order to bring out a bit of that low end body without interfering with the super low end of the kick drum. As with everything in music production, when it comes to EQ, practice makes perfect. It does take a little bit of time and effort to understand how to use EQ and when to apply it if you need to apply it at all. However, as you continue on and start to understand different styles and different sounds, you'll develop this intuitive sense of how and when to apply EQ and what ways you could apply it in in order to either address a problem or make something stand out more. That brings us to the end of this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel down below for more quick tips like this one. If you have a suggestion for a future episode, let us know down in the comments. Comments, and as always, thanks for watching.